My name is Brett Burt. I'm the Vice President of Global Research for the Power Industry for Industrial, Industrial Info Resources. And I'm here today to talk about some trends in the power industry in the United States. Uh, challenges facing the power industry these days. Uh, the power industry is certainly facing a uh, period of transformation in the United States. This ranges everything from uh, the retirement of part of the generation fleet to meet environmental standards to uh, the shortage of uh, demand for electricity an aging generation fleet and certainly an antiquated uh, infrastructure uh, system to develop uh, to deliver electricity to the market but of course anytime we have challenges we see a wave of opportunities come along with those and I'd like to talk about just a couple of those today uh, primarily uh, for the new generation side of things from a natural gas uh, generation standpoint as well as renewable uh, energy uh, developments. So recently we heard uh, that the uh, renewable tax credits for re uh, renewable energy uh, have been renewed and this is two parts. The first part being uh, renewable tax production tax credits for wind. So back in December we saw that it, uh, that incentive extended for a five-year period uh, projects that started in 2015 or 2016 uh, enjoy a 2.3 cent per kilowatt hour uh, tax credit for the first 10 years of operation and then that tax credit slowly decreases year by year uh, through the year 2019 and ends at the beginning of 2020. Now tax credits aren't the only thing driving wind energy uh, we're seeing wind energy, utility scale wind energy, becoming more competitive with other types of fuel, uh, such as natural gas, for instance. We're seeing some power purchase agreements uh, being signed across the country in the $20 per megawatt hour range. So it's definitely uh, becoming more competitive and more affordable moving forward. The other driver, I would say, for the wind sector and solar as well, is uh, renewable portfolio standards. Uh, we saw a wave of these uh, uh, go through over the past decade or so. It's a state by state program uh, earmarking certain percentages of the electricity generated in those states uh, must come from renewable uh, energy sources. Uh, some of those have been met but we see new rounds coming down the pike. Uh, California is looking to move to 30 percent renewable energy by the year 2020 and then incrementally increase that to 50 percent by the year 2040. There are other such uh, cases uh, across the country where renewable portfolio standards are, are driving development of more renewable energy resources. The other uh, big piece of this is the solar uh, segment. So we saw extensions of tax credits uh, called the investment tax credit for solar uh, energy. And this is a one-time tax break of 30% for projects that start construction uh, by the end of the year 2019. Uh, those tax breaks decrease uh, for projects starting in 2020 and 2021. And then, of course, we see a, a dramatic decrease for projects that start construction after uh, 2021. And these are for commercial projects. Uh, the residential uh, tax credits end in 2020. So what does all this mean? Well, if we look at the large picture uh, of development for wind energy across the country, uh, 2016 through 2020, there have been 60 gigawatts of uh, generation proposed uh, coming from the wind sector. I don't think nearly that amount will move forward. Uh, as you can see here, uh, we have identified the projects in the high probability uh, areas and what investment that would represent. Uh, overall, uh, we see uh, a confidence factor when we look at everything being proposed versus what actually moves forward. Uh, we see about a 29% confidence factor uh, for the wind sector. 
At the end of the day, I see maybe seven to eight gigawatts for wind energy uh, kicking off each year for the next uh, four to five years. Uh, it could trend upwards of, of 10 gigawatts, uh, but for now, that's what, what we're following and what we're estimating. From a solar standpoint, you can see here the developments of uh, hotspot activity for solar. Uh, at the moment, we're tracking uh, $14 billion and 5 gigawatts of solar capacity uh, from a commercial scale, a utility scale, that is uh, under development at this point in time. There's another 5 gigawatts uh, earmarked for construction in 2016. And solar projects uh, are generally, at the moment, uh, having a greater realization rate than wind projects. Uh, we see about a 54% confidence factor uh, when it comes to solar projects. And of course, the hot spots of development for solar uh, shouldn't be any surprise to anyone. They're in places like uh, Texas, Nevada, California, uh, certainly Arizona and Florida or other uh, areas for uh, uh, growth uh, now and moving forward for the for the solar sector of the industry. And then finally, another area uh, for new build activity that we see is the natural gas sector. With natural gas enjoying uh, very low prices and abundance across the country, uh, we see natural gas becoming more and more as a dominant fuel uh, in the United States today. In fact, there's been a couple of occasions during the year 2015 where we saw natural gas actually surpass coal as the uh, dominant fuel. Today, we see natural gas supplying 32% of our, our electricity across the country. A great deal of this new build activity will be built to replace uh, facilities that have been retired in recent years. A lot of the coal uh, that is being retired is being replaced by natural gas uh, fired generation. We're also seeing a lot of coal to gas switching uh, taking place in this sector. All in all, to sum it all up, at the moment uh, we're tracking 25 gigawatts of uh, natural gas fired capacity that is under construction. And we expect over the next uh, four to five years that we will see another eight to nine gigawatts of natural gas fired capacity kick off each year uh, during that time frame. Natural gas right now is enjoying a very good confidence factor, uh, somewhere in the 58% range. And uh, for the next uh, four to five years, we're estimating almost $80 billion uh, moving forward in high, uh, high probability projects. Finally, uh, all of this uh, with the new generation, uh, especially uh, renewable uh, generation, uh, requires a great deal of investment for the transmission and distribution sector. I just visited last week in Orlando, Florida, Distributech, and a lot of the conversations at that show and that conference were revolving around uh, the need to uh, integrate renewable energy into the into the grid, and that's what's driving a lot of the investment right now for um, the T and D sector. We see a lot of transmission lines coming out of areas where uh, there's high volumes of renewable energy, such as Oklahoma and Kansas, Texas, even uh, to supply uh, power in regions that uh, are not good candidates for renewable energy projects. Certainly uh, an aged and antiquated uh, infrastructure system is driving a lot of projects uh, for the TND sector as well. Uh, closures uh, in the Northeast, plant closures for coal-fired and, and nuclear uh, generation facilities. Uh, there are programs in place to, um, to reroute uh, a lot of distribution lines to uh, make up for shortages in, in generation from uh, facilities that have been closed. So we see all of these reasons as, as drivers in the T&D sector 
and overall I think we'll we'll continue to see seven to eight billion dollars a year uh, moving forward in this sector over the next several years.